that um, I'm not welcomed in Portland, Oregon. Well, welcome to my apartment, and it's in Portland. So, fight me if you want to bring a fight over this, okay? Bye! So, fight me if you want to bring a fight over this, okay? Bye! Good evening! I'm Tom Tucker. You guys remember Chaz Chop? The... Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle when the Antifa and Black Lives Matter took over six city blocks. They had their own society, their own borders, their own police. Unfortunately, their experiment ended with several shootings and other heinous crimes that YouTube doesn't allow me to mention. And now it's happening again, but this time in Portland. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Red House Autonomous Zone. Let's get into it. Before we start, let me give you a brief history of the Red House so you understand what's going on. For months, Antifa has been occupying the property known as the Red House in order to protect the squatters who had been living there. The squatters had been served an eviction notice several times, and they ignored it every single time. On Tuesday, police got tired and finally raided the property. They were met by several gun-toting idiots who were promptly arrested, and the police cleared the property. However, Antifa put calls out over social media in order for other comrades to come to the space and take it over, the Red House. Hours later, over 100 members of Antifa showed up with power tools and weapons and set up a reinforced perimeter and guarded with said weapons. And thus, the Red House Autonomous Zone was born. Not under American jurisdiction, under Antifa jurisdiction. Very nice. Progress. A member of Antifa, or a comrade, was kind enough to show us the ins and outs of the Red House Autonomous Zone, including some of the reinforcements that they had put up, like spikes. Let's take a look at that video. Actually, you know, I'll just take you all on a little tour right quick. The... All this got we pasted yesterday, it's pretty dope. Yeah, we're not fucking around here. <clears throat> very nice, very nice. I wonder if it'll hold. Oh wait, it didn't hold. The police returned and they were forced to retreat. Take a look at that video. When people and journalists tried filming what was going on, Antifa broke their phones. Typical Antifa tactics. Gotta love them. This is our job. Of course. This is our this is our life. You get paid to just take it. And if you really want to grasp how sick these people are, check out this speech by their head of security, or as I like to call him, their head of terrorism operations. Take a listen. I'm Nicholas, if you don't know me, I've been the public safety leader at Red House for the past three months or so. Um, so real quick, I just want to say that, you know, a lot of people are kind of new to kind of what we're doing in this space. And one thing I noticed and stuff that could definitely be tightened up is communications. So this afternoon, we will be having a, a conversation about communications and protocol and how we do threat assessment so that we're effectively communicating with each other between each barriers. Also know that a lot of my team members are on pretty much stationed on every single position at all times of the day. So if there is a problem, find somebody with a mic. We're probably all linked in together. And uh, as they were saying um, a second ago, uh, we're all here in this together. So let's work with each other and stuff and let's fucking do this. Thank you, I guess. Uh, reports have come out from residents who live in the area that Antifa have been stockpiling weapons and Molotov cocktails in the Red House for months. 
Could they be planning something bigger than the protection of the squatters? Comment down below. And it's also interesting to point out that the squatters they're protecting have another house a couple blocks down. So it's not like they would be homeless. This is a political fight. Clearly, the family has a place to go. So, was the Red House Autonomous Zone always in the plans? Hmm. Comment down below. I think it was. And how do you guys think that the police should deal with the Autonomous Zone? In Seattle, once the mayor was over the summer of love idea she had, she finally sent in the police, and they tore that shit down in minutes. Unfortunately for Portland, their mayor is Ted Wheeler, and Ted Wheeler is the second worst mayor in the nation behind the one and only Bill de Blasio. Ted Wheeler, who has supported the Antifa behavior in his city for months, said, hmm, I'm gonna act tough now since I won the election, and he tweeted this. I am authorizing the Portland police to use all lawful means to end the illegal occupation of North Mississippi Avenue and to hold those violating, those violating our community's laws accountable. There will be no autonomous zone in Portland. Ooh, what a tough guy. Too bad he capitulated like a little beta cuck that he is. Little Ted Wheeler reached a deal with Antifa. The details of the deal are unclear. What we do know is that they reached a deal and that the barricades have been coming down on the Red House Autonomous Zone, and, police ha and the police had said that they're not going to interfere with them anymore. What does that mean? Who knows? The details are not clear. But in my opinion, you can look at this one of two ways. The first way is he's appeasing criminals. And as we all know, appeasing criminals never works. They just keep doing what they want to do until one day the tensions are so high that your community is going to explode in war. The second way of looking at this is that you're negotiating with terrorists. And that's the way I'm looking at it, little Ted Wheeler. You're negotiating with terrorists. We don't do that here. So you best check yourself and start acting appropriately. But how do you see it? Comment your opinion down below. If you like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe. It's free. Share it, maybe? Man, that's asking for too much. Thank you for watching. See you next time.